Doof, doof. So, as you may have gathered by the assortment of parts I've got sitting right next to me, the day has come. I'm about to do GQ owner things. The internet's gonna laugh at me. So insert subwoofer joke here, but we're putting a stereo in the GQ. So this isn't just a spur of the moment thing. I've been thinking about this for a long time. I've got a head unit, courtesy of Patrick, in here that's pretty good. It's got CarPlay and all that sort of thing, but it has factory speakers from 1989 and how they even produce sound at all is a miracle. I took the door trims off. There is no foam around the outside of the speaker. It's missing completely. So as soon as you turn it up slightly, all you get is distortion. <laughs> So I had to do speakers at some point anyway, like it had to happen. I do love music. I'm not like a subwoofer jokes. It's gonna be full of subwoofer jokes, this whole video. I'm not into bangers. I just like good quality music, okay? Yeah, this stereo system sort of evolved from me going, I need to put better speakers in. And then it was like, do I amplify the speakers or do I run them off the head unit? Then I was doing a fair bit of work on a mate's Delica of all things. I know, more jokes. But um, he's mad into stereos and uh, he goes, oh, look after us on the deli and I'll hook you up with a sub and an amp. So great. So this is said sub, which is bigger than I would have put in the car otherwise. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. This thing's going to, this is going to kick. Needs new carpet. I know, a little bit tatty looking, but we'll get to that. I'm going to, once everything's installed and I've mounted everything, then we'll start with that. The amp's already mounted. It's on the front of the rear drawer, hidden behind the rear seats. So that's a five channel, 1800 watt, amp so that's going to handle all the door speakers and the sub then i went with the car builder's lining now that is a factor of me going every old car i've heard with any sort of high powered speakers in the doors they rattle like all hell and it annoys me so we've gone with sound deadening in the doors and the acoustic line is going to just go straight behind the speakers so this this is the stick on sound deadening same as what lamb's put in his gq which made a massive difference to the actual sound in the car just road noise wise. Um, and I think it's also gonna make a massive difference to the audio quality. And then this, they just sell this by the sheet. It's already, I've already used it as you can see, but we're gonna just put a section of that behind each one of the speakers, try and keep the noise inside the car. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so what have I actually got here? This is three mil MDF, high quality stuff that I cut with a jigsaw. These are to space the speakers out in the doors. So. The factory speakers mount behind the door cards. These are gonna mount in front of the door cards. There's obviously a step back in the sheet metal of the door. So if you just mount the speaker straight to it and pull it in, it'll pull the door card in with it. A, it wrecks the door card. B, it looks like trash, so that's not gonna happen. These are going behind the door card to fill that space. Now, speaker wise, what do we got? So, if you don't know about GQs, GQs have got speakers in the rear barn doors and the front driver and passenger doors. The rear doors, you've got more room because there's not a window that drops down. So these are going in the rear. These are 320 watt peak, 100 watt, 100 watt RMS speakers, 160 mil, so 16 centimeters. So those are going in the rear barn doors. In the front doors, I've had to step down a bit. As I said, GQ doors are pretty thin when you're trying to fit speakers in. So these are the these are the biggest speaker I could fit without running a massive spacer. Um, there's not a huge amount of legroom with me sitting in there as it is, so I didn't want to space speakers out into the footwell. So these are going to fit flush with the doors with a bit of luck. They should have, with the spaces, about well, these little spaces I've made, they should only have about four mil of clearance from the windows. So hopefully that fits. These are only a 300 watt peak and only a 30 watt RMS. So very low for the amp that I'm driving them with, but it is what it is, and most of the power I'm going to be pushing through the rear barn door speakers, so they should be fine. Now, moving on to the thing we're going to make all the jokes about this entire video. Subwoofer, okay? This is a kicker. Um, it's a CVR. It's a few years old now, but they were a fairly high quality sub when they were made. It's about, uh, I believe it's 800 watt peak, 400 watt RMS. So that's fairly decent. Um, it's going to be plenty for me. Like I said, I'm not going to bush doofs. Well, I'm not planning to anyway, okay? I do own a GQ that's getting a stereo put in it, so. But it's more so, like I like 80s, 90s, early 2000s rock uh, and country music. That's so, like, uh, get ready for the end of this video. I wanna play 1800 watts of cowbell and fiddle for you. It's gonna be great, you're gonna love it. But um, yeah, so it's more sound quality than anything, so that should be fine for me. It's in a pretty decent size housing, which is gonna take up a fair bit of room, um, but my plan is to have that running. I've got a two meter cable for it. I'm gonna run that on pretty much latches, is my plan, on top of the rear drawer setup. So if it's in the way or I wanna stack something in there or I'm going away on a long trip and I don't want it in the way, unclip it, disconnect it and leave it at home. Now, RCA leads are the next thing. That is a six channel 
RCA lead set, five metres long, to run from the head unit back to the amp. Um, make sure you get good quality RCA leads when you're doing this sort of stuff, otherwise, it's one of those things that if you're gonna have, if you're gonna start cheaping out on things, I mean, it's, it's still, this is still a budget stereo setup, but you gotta pick where you spend your money. And if you start cheaping out on things, the whole system loses because of it. The next thing on that note is speaker wire. Now, this is slightly larger than standard gauge speaker wire. It's about 14 gauge and oxygen free copper, which is what you should be using for speaker wire. You can use, you can use any wire for speaker wire, but again, I don't know the technical things about it. All I know is that Everyone that's into audio stuff says use decent quality speaker wire, so that's what I'm doing. I've then stepped up to 12 gauge for the sub, which is bigger again, uh, just bigger conductors, obviously drawing more power. That's all probably a little bit oversized for what it's actually doing, but I figured if I'm gonna run the speaker wire the whole way through the car, because I have to now, because it's going from an amp rather than from the head unit, a little bit of overkill never hurt. Moving on, where we're gonna start is the sound deadening and the acoustic liner. So. As I said earlier, don't want the doors to rattle, so the guys at Car Builders have hooked us up with sound deadening, same as what's in Liam's GQ. Made a massive difference in his doors, just getting rid of that tinny sort of rattle that, I mean, early four-wheel drives all have it. Like, it's just, they just, they didn't have sound deadening. There's nothing, I mean, I pulled the door cards off this a while ago. There's literally a sheet of maybe like a little bit of rubber about two mil thick, about that big square, stuck to the middle of the door skin, and that's it. So. Sound deadening is non-existent, so that's gonna make a massive difference there. And then this acoustic liner, as I said, we're gonna cut a square of that, put it behind the actual speaker itself. And the idea is to reflect any sound that's coming off the back of the speaker into the car itself. So the stereo is for me, not for everyone else in the street, all right? Until I open the rear doors, that is. And then, yeah, that's the insulation tape to stick all that down with, make sure there's no loose edges and that sort of thing. All right, uh, now the amp. The amp is already in the car, so I can show you that now. I mounted that earlier. Um, like I said, I've been planning this for a long time. This was actually set to go in about three months ago. That was before the car started having overheating issues and I found the warped head. I just couldn't bring myself to be the guy with the big stereo sitting on the side of the road because he spent all his time and money on stereo and not an engine that actually runs. So that had to take priority. Now it's time for a bit of fun. So, this is the amp in question. It's a Cadence 1800 watt, five channel amp. It's gonna be definitely oversized for the speakers it's driving, as I said, especially the front speakers. So, all fine there. And yeah, they're a pretty high quality amp. Again, a few years old now, but tested, working. Like I said, this is a budget stereo build, so you can pick these up secondhand. It's a bit of a gamble, secondhand audio equipment, but like I said, this was off a of mate, so got lucky there. This thing's gonna pump. All right, so the first step to getting in the sound deadening and the front door speakers is obviously removing these door trims. Now these are old, the clips are brittle, and for a GQ they're in pretty good nick I think. So I'm going to be gentle, I'm going to show you how to get them off, hopefully without breaking things. A few important tools, very technical Phillips head screwdriver, again technical, towel, that's important, I'll show you why in a minute and get yourself one of these. If you don't have one, or you don't want to buy one, you can probably just make one out of a piece of sheet metal called a trim removal tool or a clip removal tool. You can find one of them pretty much anywhere. You can get them in plastic too, but that one is thin and it's easy to get behind the door cards. Right, now, first step, and this is what the towel's important for. There's some fun little clips that hold these in, which have all sorts of names, often called a Jeebus clip, as in Jeebus, where did it go? Because they like to fly away. Now. Easiest way to get these out, you can try heaps of things, you can get picks behind them and that sort of thing, but you often wreck the door cards, especially if they're vinyl. These are carpet, so it's a bit easier. But, towel or rag, slide it behind the window rig like that, and just shimmy it around. With a bit of luck, it'll catch the clip, and just like that. Ideally, don't drop it just like I did, but there you go. Clip doesn't fly away, door card doesn't get stabbed, that's the easiest way to get those out. Right, with the window winder off, all you've got to undo is one little screw here, two screws under here, that comes off, and then you take your trim removal tool and just work it around the underside of the door. You can just try and yank these off, but more often than not, they're only cardboard, you'll end up wrecking the door card trying to do it. So, a lot easier to get one of them and just gently pop the door card off rather than bending it. So. That's the GQ with the door cards taken off. Now, next step is gonna to be to remove these tiny factory speakers, which are 
not in the greatest of form. The ones in the rear doors are even worse. I'll show you them later. And then gently take off this plastic because I'm going to reuse it. This plastic sheet, which is like a weather shield, keeps the dust and the water out of the car because water will actually flow down the inside of these doors. So will dust. So that's all that protects that. We're going to take all that off so I've got access to the inside of the door through here and through the speaker hole to line as much of the door with the sound deadening as I can. Then the acoustic line is going to go just behind the speaker in a little square section there. With a bit of luck, speakers will fit in front of the glass. So that'll be fun, but hopefully my 4 mil clearance is um, accurate. Now the rear doors are pretty similar. Same door handle screw, remove that. These, these are a bit of a trick. So get a little pick, that's what I use, and hook from the inside edge out. So that both ends, take that off, that off, and then same thing, gently remove the door card with the trim removal tool. Other side is even easier. There is nothing on this, so just remove with the trim tool, just remove the little clips around the outside edge, whole door card comes off. So, as I was saying, these rear speakers are shot. There's meant to be foam the whole way around this edge, and it is just dead. So, how those even make sound is impressive, but as soon as they get any sort of power through them, it's just distortion. So, yeah, those are a bit past it, but in a 1989 car, I guess that's what you expect. Alright, so, door cards are off, and since you saw it last, I've started running all the wiring in the back of the GQ. Now I've gone, because I'm putting in an amp, I'm running all new speaker wires, so everything that's in their factory is tiny. Like, the factory speakers are like 8 watt RMS and 25 peak, so nothing compared to what's going in there. Obviously the speaker wires from factory aren't going to keep up. Also they're going to an amp which is in the back, not the head unit which is in the front, so yeah. All right, so that is the wiring ran all the way through the car. I've got it to all four doors. I've got power, everything sorted. Um, it's taken me way longer than it probably should have, which is why I haven't filmed it. Uh, I've gone completely over the top with the wiring, tried to keep everything as neat as I possibly could, which is why it's taken so long. You will find that the neater you want it, the longer it will take, but I think it pays off in the end. No one will probably ever know, but I'll know, and that's really what matters. So when you go to put the terminals on the speaker themselves, make sure you're using something half decent. There's no point going to all this effort and then putting a rubbish connection on the end of it. So I've gone for these, which not only pick up on the wire itself, they also pick up on the insulation, which stops them being able to yank off. These are a great terminal all around. I use them on heaps of stuff. Uh, way better than an insulated terminal, in my opinion. You can actually confirm that they've picked up on the wire because you can see it and there's less chance of them yanking off. Then all you've got to do is slide a bit of heat shrink over them so you can A, identify it, and B, covers the terminal, and you're set. So I didn't film running every individual wire because, to be honest, I don't think anyone wants to watch that. It has taken a fair bit of time, only because, as I said, I'm trying to keep everything neat. So I figured I may as well just give you a quick overview. So if anyone is wiring a GQ, it gives you a basic idea of where to run speaker wires. So basically, rear speakers are easy. I've gone from one side across to the other, up the rear quarter to the amp and also up the left hand side under the kick trims to the left hand front speaker across the dashboard to the right hand front speaker. It's all fairly easy stuff, just make sure you're not going to leave them on any sharp edges. If speaker wires do short out, do have the potential to damage amps or a head unit if you're running them direct off the head unit, so make sure they're not rubbing on any sharp edges. It's less than ideal to put them in massive electrical looms, but in some cases you are going to put them next to a loom. There's no way to help it, like especially modern cars, things get busy. So yeah, now I'll show you where I put the amp. So I've probably spent way too long behind a rear seat where no one's ever going to look, but I'm fairly happy with that. Still a few little things to tidy up, but on the whole pretty happy with how that's mounted. Obviously got speaker wire outputs, power and earth. These are just RCAs running across to the other side from the head unit. Everything runs up the kick trim, sitting under the carpet, pops out just there, straight into the amp. Power cables are across here. Now this has been really easy for me because it's all running into the second battery which is right next to it. That makes life easy. Tried to keep that as neat as possible. Still got to tie up the bottom there. Once put a fuse in it, Obviously not putting a fuse in until everything is done and I'm ready to actually test it. Now something that I think a lot of people forget or just don't pay much attention to in general is that amps and audio equipment in general will draw power in surges. It's not going to be a steady flow of current, it's going to go in spikes, surges, whatever you want to call it. As the beat or the volume goes up and down, so is the current draw. Now. I've used 4 gauge or 4 AWG, which is American wire gauge. Um, a lot of amps and well, audio equipment, again, will just refer to wire size as gauge, which is generally AWG. Because the equipment's American, they go off American wire gauge. Don't get me started on wire sizing. It's the same as thread pitches. There's way too many different standards. But 
yeah, audio equipment, generally AWG. Now, this four gauge wire is rated to about 70 amps continuous, dependent on a few factors. Um, so it will hopefully never draw that constantly, but I've got a 60 amp fuse in it to start off with and hopefully that'll be heaps. And the other thing to consider is if you're gonna run the amp further away from the battery. Now mine's right next to the battery, which makes life really easy for me. But if you're gonna run it, example, from the battery in the front of the car and the amp's way back here, you will have to upsize the cable accordingly. Um, you can find charts and that online for that sort of thing just to cover voltage drop, essentially. You gotta look at the current you're drawing, make sure you're still supplying full voltage and that you're not gonna overload everything. Just thought I'd mention it, car audio is one of those things that a lot of people are willing to just sort of have a crack at, which is fine, but just make sure you do a fair bit of research into it. Make sure you're doing things safely. Keep everything fused, that way it's protected. I mean, you don't wanna lose your car. You don't wanna burn your car to the ground for the sake of a stereo, like, let's be real. So yeah, make sure everything's fused and you'll be sweet. All right, so we're done with the speaker wiring for now. We're gonna move on to sound deadening the doors while I've got everything apart. So this was pretty much a theory of, I've already got the door cards off doing the speakers. GQs have pretty much no sound deadening in the doors. I'll show you in a minute what there is, it's hilarious. So may as well, it's gonna improve, A, make the car quieter while I'm driving, but also I don't want the doors to rattle when the stereo's turned up, that's annoying. So this will fix that. So yeah, I've got the sheets of the car builder sound deadening here. Uh, there's a box of that, so hopefully be enough to do all four doors. And I'll probably be doing the barn doors as well, so six doors. It's pretty much a process of just peeling these plastic sheets off and then cutting it to suit, cleaning the inside of the door and sticking it on. Let's get into it. All right, so this is the GQ door with the plastic sheet taken off it. Now, you definitely want to put that sheet back on and try not to rip it when you take it off. This is like a tacky glue, so you can pretty much reuse it and it'll re-stick to that. Uh, this is the factory sound deadening I was talking about, which is, oh, let's be honest, a complete joke, like that right there, which I'm sure stops the door from drumming entirely, but yeah, that ain't doing much. So we should be able to make a massive difference here. Let's get into it. All right, so that's this door sorted. Got the sound deadening in, got the acoustic liner in, just gotta put the plastic sheet back on, door card on, and the speaker in, we'll be set. But before I do that, thought we'd do a comparison. The other door isn't done yet, so let's see if we can hear the difference. So as you can see, that's made a massive difference. Passes the knock test. I'm allowed to do that to my own car. Don't ever let me see anyone else doing it. But that's made a massive difference. So yeah, let's throw it in the other door, throw it in the barn doors, chuck some speakers in and see how this thing sounds. All right, so door cards are back on, speakers are back in, sub is quite obviously back in. That's gonna go on latches. It's not got anything holding it at the moment. It's just sitting there. I gotta recarpet the box that it's in and then I'm gonna put a couple of latches. So if I wanna get rid of it, I can just unlatch it, disconnect the lead and take it out. Uh, worth noting on the rear speakers, you need a six mil spacer. So basically use a template that comes on the speaker box. I just cut a couple of bits of MDF, uh, three mil MDF, two spacer rings for the rear, so six mil, or you can get some six mil MDF, and three mil for the front, which brought the speakers out nice and flush with the door cards. Issue I see with a lot of GQs is the factory speakers go behind the door cards. These won't fit if you do them that way, so, or they will, but the basically the foam ring around the outer of the speaker that the cone flexes on will rub against the factory grill for the speaker, which will end up wrecking the speaker. So don't do that, put them in front, they look better anyway, in my opinion. So yeah, by using the spacers, keep them nice and flush on the door cards, all looks good. So I've already tuned this in with my mate Mike, who I got the amp and the sub off. He helped me dial everything in so it sounds sweet. Paddy's on his way over right now. Uh, we're gonna crank this thing up and see what it sounds like. All right, so I'm at Dan's house now. We're in the patrol and he's about to give me the, uh, the subwoofer treatment. So I haven't heard it yet, but I'm pretty keen to see what it sounds like compared to my little baby sub under my seat. So Dan. Hit it. Let's hit it. Speakers sound nice. They do sound nice. Yeah, we build. <laughs> this sounds I'm kidding, you like that. Yeah, I like it. Suspense. I can already feel a bit of bass. Yeah, yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> the shit starts vibrating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the mirror start going. Yeah. I should, you know that video on the internet where they're driving around the car and they're like, boop, boop, yeah. boop. <laughs> 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 
So good. It's clear, isn't it? It's but that's a clear clarity. When you when you were getting the sub, I was like, oh, it's such a big sub. I wasn't sure how it was gonna go, like with the clarity of the sound, like how yep. it all mix in. But it sounds so clear. Like I thought it might be too much bass for yeah for the, the car. music yeah, like, yeah, or yeah, for yeah, the yeah. car, but yeah. That so that's sounds, what I was talking about. Yeah. So there's a fair bit actually more than I thought would be involved in tuning it properly. Yeah, because yeah, it was, yeah. It was. Like, like you said, it was bassy as hell when we first, yeah, when I first right. fired yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. This is, this is a, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I love it. By having the sub as big as it is, yeah. you take away the load of the speakers trying to reproduce bass. Yeah, as yeah. You know. So we've dialed every... So your high-pass filters and low-pass filters, you can vary what goes to the sub versus what goes right. to the speakers. Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the speakers yeah. right now are doing, like, no bass. Yeah, yeah, okay, like yeah, you turned yeah. off the sub, yeah. it'd be tinny as. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why it's so clear. Yeah, like okay, that right, yeah, okay. Because that's everything's just... still clear. Yeah. Well, the sound deadening definitely works because you yeah, just feel like yeah. it sounds it sounds good in here. It's... Like, it sounds like, you know, <laughs> when you go to, like, one of those amphitheaters and it's like they've designed it to make the music sound good. Like, it all sounds, doesn't sound, like, distorted it's or, like, rattly it's or... rattly or yeah, bouncing yeah, yeah, off yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. it it sounds... R I'm very impressed. <laughs> I gotta put on, my, I gotta play with the Ram more music. Patrick now. likes it. Yeah. What are we putting on? I reckon, can I put on, like, a bassy song? Yes. <laughs> oh, it sounds so good coming out the back though. Reese speakers are better than the front. With the sheds vibrating. I didn't uh, sound deck the shed, that's where I went wrong. That sounds so good coming out the back of the car. Like, oh, there we go. Now I did promise 1800 watts of cowbell and I'm not a man to go against my word. The camera is not doing this justice, but it sounds absolutely awesome. Like crisp, loud, like you're at a concert. You gotta remember, people are gonna play this back through their like phone speakers and be yeah. like, yeah, what yeah, are they yeah, going yeah, on about? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be here to see it. <laughs> I just can't get over the clarity of that sound. Like it's it's set up well. It sounds Crisp, it? bloody awesome. How how long do you reckon you can get it? You can play this at camp at night before the battery goes flat. That is a good question. Because like how big how big is the amp again? Eighteen hundred watts. Yeah, so it's a lot of power. So actually, one of one of the guys I work with, who's an engineer, very good with the numbers, mm -hmm. worked out. Uh, <laughs> After I showed him my dyno video, <laughs> it's about 2.4% of the car's power. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Flat That's chat is now nice, stereo. Nice. I regret. I didn't want him to tell me that. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah. No, I'd say without running the car, so it's all hooked up to run off the second battery. Yeah, yeah. And I can switch over in the dash to run the stereo, so yeah, everything's okay, yeah. off the second battery. Yeah. Um, in saying that, oh, at a medium volume, mm. like probably, I'd like to say like. A few hours, yeah, but flat out probably an hour. Like, yeah, okay. So it. yeah, it's moving some serious <clears throat> amount. You remember, it is. It's an eighteen hundred watt amp, but yeah. I'm never gonna put eighteen hundred watts through it. Nah, like, nah. It's dialed those yeah. front speakers because they're because of the depth issues you have with GQ front doors. Yeah, yeah. They're way underrated for everything yeah, else. Yeah, okay. so yeah. They're only on the gains, which is basically your power levels to to the speakers. Yeah. For the front channel, it's on yeah. like a quarter. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. so there's... Yeah, so I see. <laughs> the amp's got a lot more capability than what it's actually drawing. So it's probably using like a thousand watts max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and if you... If someone watches this video and then, you know, maybe like, like me, wants to set up something like this in their car, mm. what tips do you have to sort of set up with a big sub? Like, what, what do you recommend? Yeah, recommend I mean, basically do? just like... I put a lot of thought into this before I actually started doing it. So yeah. sort of actually think about it and plan what you want to do for your car in particular, like, yep. I mean, if you have a ute, for example, you don't need this much. Nah, no, the cab's there's smaller. no cabin exactly space. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 
So I've always found like the bigger, that's why I'm such a big sub. There's a fair bit of space in yeah, this car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bigger the area you have, the more sound you're going to need to fill it. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. But yeah. basically, yeah, I mean, you just, I say don't scrimp out on everything, but I pretty much did on everything. So, <laughs> nah, um, like the amp second hand, the sub second hand, but they're both way more than what I really need. Yeah, yeah. The head yeah. unit was actually Paddy's out of the 80s series. That's right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> stolen from the man um get good quality stuff but doesn't necessarily mean pay the most you can yeah 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 so yeah those are all pretty much oversized for what i need run good cable like the factory gq speaker cable is tiny yeah like, right tiny. yeah 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 Actually, i think there's a picture of that we'll throw in but <laughs> there's nothing because the factory front speakers were rms of eight watts and peak of 25. Sound deadening's definitely made a big difference. Like I've heard cars with loud stereos before mm. and that's the main reason I wanted to do it is I didn't want the doors to rattle. Well that's it, exactly right. We heard mm. the difference there. Like we heard the shed shaking, yeah. but the car the was car not was, making any noise. Yeah. You know what I yeah. did notice? The number plate was rattling. Oh, yeah. so oh. I, had put, I had to put rubber stoppers behind the number plate. Oh, that was the only part that rattled. But wow, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, the, yes, the doors themselves, the door skins don't rattle. Which yeah, is yeah. Really, it is annoying because it sounds like your speakers are distorting even yeah, when they're not. Yeah, yeah, so, no, true, true. That's a big part of it. Yeah, basically just, just put a fair bit of thought into yeah. it and plan everything out. Don't rush it and just throw it all in there because you'll just regret it. Yeah, <laughs> like you just, yeah. 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 And you'll end up, the poor man pays twice. Like you'll mm. end up spending more to make it good. Yeah. you end up yeah. redoing everything. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it's a bloody awesome Sorry. mod. And I can't wait to hear it at camp. Like, yeah. back on the patrol, you can like open up the rear doors like that, have two big speakers there, the sub there. I'm it's thinking, gonna yeah, sound it's like sick. campfire. <laughs> yeah, nice tunes. But that's the thing; it sounds good when it's going crazy for party <clears throat> levels. But it also sounds nice yeah. just as like a, a yeah, good so background noise. Actually, this mic, the mate that I got all the gear off, gave me probably the best bit of advice on this. He yeah. goes, "Turn the gains right down to nothing. Turn yeah. the head unit all the way up. Yeah, and then tweak everything up." Yeah, okay. Because yeah. he goes, guaranteed, you'll be camping with your mates and one of them's going to turn it up flat out. <laughs> yeah, so exactly right. So if you set right. it this way, flat out still isn't killing anything. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right, well, bloody awesome mod. Good work. Can't wait to see it out in the bush. Glad you like it. <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe picked up a few things on putting a stereo in your car. Some people will probably say this is stupid, but that's all right because I won't be able to hear them anyway. Um, heaps to still go on the patrol, so stay tuned.